Wow, talk about whiplash. It's pretty rare to see two such radically different takes on the same franchise, but just a couple of months after the release of Godzilla Minus One, we've been treated to the cinematic experience that is Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. What's this weird obsession with empires these days? Ah, whatever. The point here is that the tonal shift between these two movies is roughly comparable to taking a speedboat up to 60 miles an hour and then dropping the anchor over the side. And believe me, I could tell you a few stories about that. <laughs> Whereas Minus One was a compelling post-war human-centered drama with a lot of interesting things to say about duty, honor, sacrifice and redemption that just so happened to have a giant fire-breathing lizard in it, New New Empire is a movie about giant CGI monsters punching each other and blowing things up for 115 minutes that just so happens to have some cardboard cutout humans in it. And whether or not you enjoy this film, it really comes down to what you expect to get out of a Godzilla movie and how large a chunk of your brain you're able to shut down before the film starts. But hey, let's begin with a plot summary to give you an idea of what the narrative structure of this film's all about. Which to be honest is a bit like a Michelin food critic describing a cheese sandwich, but whatever. Here goes everything. So New Empire is set a couple of years after the events of the previous movie. Kong and Godzilla have decided that things just aren't working out between them and they've gone their separate ways. Godzilla's keeping the peace on the surface while Kong has gone down into the Hollow Earth to look for other giant monster apes just like him. And as it happens, it's not long before he finds them. Meanwhile, the cartoon humans are looking after the girl who's the key to everything when suddenly they pick up a mysterious signal from deep inside the planet and that causes the girl who's the key to to everything to have crazy psychic visions. Because we have to give the humans some kind of involvement in this story. Anyway, Godzilla picks up on the signal too and realises there's another big fight coming, so he eats a nuclear power station to absorb all the radiation and charge himself up. Actually, it's a shame they couldn't have directed him towards Chernobyl or Fukushima to be honest, because it would have probably solved two problems at once, but oh well. Meanwhile, all is not going well for Kong. He runs into a tribe of giant monkeys, but the leader doesn't really like him and beats him up with the help of a giant ice monster that freezes his arm. Because it turns out the evil giant monkey once tried to conquer the entire world and got his ass kicked by Godzilla, but now he's up for round two. So the cartoon humans go down into the hollow earth with the girl who's the key to everything, because now we just kind of take along small children on borderline suicide missions into deadly environments and no one even bothers to question it. Like, if they don't care then why should I? Anyway, then the cardboard humans find an underground tribe related to the girl who's the key to everything and it turns out the mysterious signal was actually a telepathic distress call from them. Because telepathy is a thing which shows up on scientific instruments now I guess. Well, I'm convinced. So with the giant evil monkey preparing to invade the surface, Kong goes on up ahead of him to ask Godzilla for help, and they have another big fight until the girl who's the key to everything convinces them to work together instead. <laughs> Are you serious? But will Giant Monkey and Giant Lizard be able to put aside their differences long enough to defeat Giant Evil Monkey and Ice Monster Thing before it can trigger a whole new Ice Age? And will any of the cardboard humans survive the battle? Also, does it even matter when you know there's probably like 10 more of these movies on the way? I said earlier that what you get out of this film is going to depend a lot on which interpretation of the Godzilla universe that you personally find appealing. If you were gripped by the well-constructed human drama and serious and emotional tone at the core of Minus One, not to mention a Godzilla that actually felt like a genuine threat to humanity, then there's not a whole lot here to get you invested. On the other hand, if you're willing to just turn your brain off and watch giant monsters destroying half the planet for a couple of hours, then there's plenty of simplistic fun to be had with all the bright colours and big explosions and campy fun. And I guess that's the real appeal of movies like this, watching different monsters with different abilities go up against each other without annoying little distractions like plot and character character and storylines to get in the way. And to be fair, it's not like I'm against that approach to popcorn movies. There's a lot to be said for big, dumb, escapist entertainment. Shit man, I had a total blast with Pacific Rim, which was practically the same formula only with giant robots ported into the equation. The difference though is that the human characters and their struggles were still very much at the core of the narrative, despite all the crazy shit going on around them, whereas they're treated more like a vague afterthought in New Empire. I didn't care one bit about any of the humans because I got the distinct impression that the writers didn't either. None of them have got any real personality or character arcs. You could basically write each of their traits on the back of 
of a soiled napkin and it would tell the audience just as much about them as the script itself does. It's not like this movie is a showcase for quality acting either. Rebecca Hall's probably the biggest name in the cast, joining the hallowed ranks of actors that are way too good for the role they're in, like Charles Dance and Millie Bobby Brown. Actually, Brown is notably absent this time around, probably because she was busy girl bossing it up in Damso. How did that work out for you, Millie? <laughs> I also love how there's not even a vague attempt to give these creatures a realistic sense of scale and inertia now. The Godzilla from Minus One was slow and ponderous, as he should be. He was like 500 feet tall and weighed more than Movie Bob. Oh! You got a real sense of how destructive he could be simply by walking around. Here though, monsters that probably weigh tens of thousands of tons are able to run and jump and turn just as easily as a human, and I don't know man, it kinda robs the movie of the epic scale and spectacle that's supposed to be its main selling point. I'm saying all of this, but I'm also aware that critiquing a film like this is an exercise in futility because it achieves that rare state of self-aware nonsense that makes it practically bulletproof. Everyone who enjoys this kind of campy, ridiculous approach to Godzilla is going to go see it, and those who want a more serious and thoughtful angle are probably going to avoid it, and never the twain shall meet. Honestly, I feel like I could pretty much copy and paste my review of Godzilla vs Kong in here and it would still be like 95% accurate. Everything that was good and bad about that movie is replicated and enhanced here, and the people that liked the previous film were almost certainly going to enjoy New Empire too. And well... Why shouldn't they? It's a movie that does pretty much what it sets out to do, provide a simple, disposable, unpretentious monster flick that'll hold people's interest until about 30 seconds after they leave the theatre and then dutifully be forgotten. It might not be the most high-minded of goals, but it achieves it all the same, and it doesn't really care if you think it's dumb as fuck because it was never interested in being smart. Truly, it seems like the only winning move is not to play, and since New Empire has no aspiration to be anything more than it is, and its fans don't seem to expect anything more from it either, there's a weird sense of contentment and harmony to be found in that level of retarded genius. So you know what? Carry on, new empire. You might not be the film that I was looking for, but you're the film that we got. And just this once, that's okay. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.